All right, hello everybody. This is Zach Zacharias. We are back again with more of Abaddon to the Corruption. So let's go ahead and continue. We are on the hunt for Miranda right now. The inner monitor base D. There is nobody here. All of the guards and workers are gone. Even a brief look around tells you that this base has been totally lost. On the surface, it looks mostly the same. There is dust on the floor. The stones are cracked. Everything seems to have lost a little of its color. It seems like a bit of work with the broom and everything will be fine. But it's more than that. The dark magic of the corruption has sunk into the stones. You can feel it, a hostile aura, a vague sensation of dark magic. Humans will not be able to return here. But what happened here? And where is Miranda? Right now, we got some imps we can kill. Okay, so far nothing here. As you walk down the passage, a vicious wind suddenly kicks up. Not just a draft, a wind. It whips down the hall one way, then another, almost throwing you off of your feet. Then, a moment later, the wind fades. The storm flies down the hall, kicking up a nasty cloud of dust as it goes, and is gone. Odd. Okay, so the, the imps are not a mutifier, but the, the infernals are. Okay, something to keep in mind. But they are definitely not going to be immune to ice. Oh, dang, I forgot. <laughs> I, I had it happen in the first Avedon game of uh, forgetting to switch my weapon when dealing with fire, mute, uh, fire uh, immune characters and creatures. Yeah, I was pretty notorious in that playthrough. You find the desiccated body of one of Monitor Base D's defenders, a lone human guard. This does not bode well for all the servants of the pack working here. What is odd is how he died. There are no cuts or burns, but the stone wall above his body is cracked. Something picked him up and threw him against the wall. The impact was hard enough to shatter rock. Alright, I'm 
pretty sure that uh, this north part is where we need to go, but let's still scout out the area some more. Maybe I should definitely give the healing scarab to Yannick. Because dexterity definitely helps you... Helps you dodge hits. Which is what Malik is focused on. Primarily. And a blade master can certainly tank. But sorcerers and sorceresses... While powerful enough to have some pretty dangerous spells, are very vulnerable to physical damage. I mean, I, that goes without saying, but yeah, I will definitely need to exchange scarabs when uh, I can uh, get back to Avidon. Okay, so let's go ahead and head up here. You enter the base of the Grand Entry Hall. It was a majestic hall before everything went wrong. Now the floor is marked with, with the scars of battle. There is a throne at the north end of the hall. A lone creature sits on it. It is a massive infernal, a beast from the de demonic realms. A human woman stands before him, talking or pleading. You aren't sure. Some force is holding her in place. And then the infernal sees you. He roars, The other guest has arrived. Come to me. Now. The wind that blew past you when you enter the base base returns. It picks you up and throws you forward, depositing you next to the woman and the massive infernal. When you are placed in front of the infernal, he waves a hand. Bands of energy appear around you, holding you in place. They aren't enough to match your strength. You could break free easily if you needed to. They are, however, sufficient to hold you in place while the demon speaks. As the Infernal watches you, you get a brief look at the woman next to you. She is in middle age with gray hair, dried, cracked skin, and tattered robes. Her journey through the corruption has worn her down. Then the demon clears his throat and you return your attention to the greater threat. He is a mighty beast, 10 feet tall and solid muscle. Lightning clouds have been tattooed on his arms, matching a tornado on his chest. He is no mere imp, but a lord of his kind. He speaks, and his voice is a breeze. A tangle of whistles and gusts from which words somehow emerge. You come. It is as. You said, Miranda. You are Miranda. The bound woman nods slightly. The demon waves a hand and a gust of wind harshly shakes you back and forth. You will attend to me. Who are you? His voice rises from a breeze to a storm. I am Kripheilus, Lord of Winds. He waits for a moment, looking for a sign of recognition. You've clearly never heard of him, and he is Earth. I came, came here, to the corruption. I took this place, my new home. Why did you come here? The corruption, the pure land. It is full of power, 
power to take. It is good. Dry and hot. It is a strong place. Good for my kind. What is a pure land? Is what? The shades. Voices of this place. Their name. For it. Not important. They are dull things. Not to be discussed. You destroyed the space? I was. The I was. The final arbiter. I came. Its doom was sealed already. I have no business with you. The demon open his, opens his mouth. More wind emerges and his whistling sound resolves into words once again. Not your decision. You came. Now you are mine. I decide. Parley. See what you can give. Miranda stares silently at the demon. She doesn't even try to look at you. I'm only here for Mar Miranda. Miranda turns her head and gives you a hateful look. The first reaction you have gotten from her. Yes. Miranda. Pathetic. Dangerous. Has plans. Do they affect me? We'll decide. We all talk soon. Must plan. Go. Prepare. Wait. Wait? Where? Kremhylus raises his hand into the air. His clawed fingers form a fist and he twirls his forearm like a tornado. You're, you try to break loose from your bonds. You are successful, but too late. A storm picks up both you and Miranda. As the dust blinds you, you are flung out of the hall. Your vision returns. Your head stops spinning. You find yourself in a cell. There are two cells. You are in the northern one. Each has a massive iron gate, both closed. Miranda is in the other cell. A barred window separates your cells, enabling you to talk. She stare, stands at the window, watching you silently. Her face is utterly impassive. Though she is worn and exhausted, much of her power and authority remains. It is amazing she survived the journey through the corruption at all, let alone emerging from it, ready and eager to confront you. Miranda stares through the bars at you. She is sipping from a mug and gnawing at one of the stale rolls Krim Hylas was kind enough to leave for you. Then she smiles bitterly. Hello, Hand. I should introduce myself, I suppose. I am Miranda, formerly Heart of Abaddon, now its enemy. Don't bother to threaten me with the gaze of Abaddon. I know more about the workings of that accursed place than you ever will. Now tell me, why are you here? Are you sure it's safe to eat that? The demon assures me he kept some uncorrupted stores to feel, feed his two prisoners. Was he telling the truth? Maybe. If I don't eat, I die. However, so I have no choice. Why are you here? I came to find you. Generously admit it. I knew it, of course. Redbeard will not end his hunt of me until he or I die. I will make sure, of course, that he dies first. And I suppose you are wondering why I am here, in the cell. Yes, why? I needed supplies. I came here to steal them. I found the base abandoned. I made the mistake of walking in too far, looking for food and water, and the demon detected me. He caught me up with his little tricks, and he was questioning me when you arrived. And what will happen now? She looks at the bars for her cell. That is up to our captor, I think. I suppose we can knock crust and threaten each other. Then Kremhylus, the oh so mighty lord of winds, will make his move. So come, young hand, let us banter. What do you know about Kremhylus? Thumb infernal, more powerful than most. They're all arrogant, all dangerous. You've never heard of him? Of course not. Do you know how many of those things there are? and every single one of them thinking they are the most powerful of all powerful things? Just another horror of the corruption. How will you deal with them? I'll escape, hopefully after he has killed you. Do you know how we can escape? We? I have no interest in we. I will escape soon, alone. Miranda continues to stare at you and not not on her roll. Sometimes she daintily picks a bit of mold off of it. You are a foe of Abaddon. For the first time, she is actually engaged in the conversation. 
She tries to restrain her rage, but that level of pure anger can't be fully expressed. Yes, I am a foe of Avedon, of the Hands, of Redbeard, of the Black Fortress itself, of the Pact, of all of it. I was the one who burned the Black Fortress. I will go to my grave regretting that the destruction was not complete. So you admit you sacked the fortress. Admit it? I boast of it. I would claim responsibility even if I didn't do it. I killed many. I will kill more. Not enough. You even hate the pact? Yes. Why not? The lazy, selfish, decadent, squabbling pact. It created Avedon. It protects and sustains that accursed place. It has an equal part of my hate. Why do you hate Avedon so much? It is arrogant, corrupt. It is led by a brutal madman. Senile and ineffective. It murdered my husband. It wastes its servants and rots their mind. He looks at Kalita. You know what I mean, don't you, Kalita? Redbeard is senile? What? You haven't talked to him? When you do, pay attention. His wits and energy ran out long ago. He has needed replacement for years, but any servant of the pack who tries to do what needs to be done is just murdered. Tell me about your husband. He tried to replace Redbeard. The senile tyrant found out and had him killed. When it happened, I had long realized that Avedon was lost. Then... Then... She shakes her head. This is a world where the true and brave die and the cruel and incompetent are raised up and applauded. You know this is true. You are a traitor. Traitor. Traitor, traitor, traitor. What a little word. Oh, young one, the world is so simple to you. It makes you boring. It's a pity. Your simple beliefs led you to hunt me. You will die for it in time. It is not fair, but Avedon has nothing to do with fairness. Why did you come to the corruption? Ah, now you ask an intelligent question. That is why I will not answer. Not why I came here, not why I am alone, nothing about the less. I am not a fool. But you did have a reason to come here. Of course I did. You think anyone would willingly come to this madness without good reason? I simply won't tell you what it is. I will stop you. I will stop you. Such courage, such bluster. You are adorable. I could pinch your cheeks. I tire of this topic. Do you want to bang her about anything else before the demon comes for us? Nothing else to say to you, traitor. Miranda shrugs. You are tedious. Let us, let's wait for the infernal in silence, then. She finishes her roll and walks to her pallet. In an instant, the storm returns. A deafening whirlwind flies into the room, spraying dust and refuse everywhere. The tumult is so great that you barely notice the two gates opening. Miranda says, well, I think our wait is done. I hope I live. And then the storm seizes her. She is roughly pulled from the cell by the wind, receiving a number of bone jarring collisions with the wall along the way. Moments later, the wind dies down. You are alone, the cell is open. Miranda is off with the demon somewhere. Ah uh, yes, secret passage just for that. As you leave the cell, Kalita stops moving. You look at her eyes for signs of consciousness, but she is lost in a fugue state. Kalita? It takes a few seconds, but she shakes out of it. I I'm sorry, Malik. I remember nothing of my time in the Avedon cells, but... She shakes her head. Being in a cell, it is hard. Come, let's get out of here. Then we when we are free, I, ha I have some interest in vengeance. Well, dang it, I didn't even see them. I was so focused on getting over there. Okay, well, at least they're focused on Kalita. Well, one just jumped over here, but I was about to say at least one is focused on Kalita, but... Eh.
Hear a loud alarm cry, like I don't care. Bring all these enemies on. <laughs> I like how at our level though we're still fighting a bunch of rats. So usually in uh spider web software games, rats are like only a minor enemy in the beginning, but that's really about it. But here they are a little bit more recurring. It kind of was that way in the first Avadon, right? Where you had a uh, recurring uh Monsters like rats and wolves and stuff like that. Then again, it makes sense because you do want to understand what all the wildlife is in the game. Stuff like that. Well, he would come up here. Rue Blade Crest. Yeah, even though my Tinker Mage can definitely wear armor once you get up to a certain strength with them, I would much rather that, uh, My blade master gets the first uh, crack at the armor, and he, and joy. We're facing off more rats. I was hoping this uh, 
just be a random section. another random one here up here okay whatever then again one of the me mechanics is clearly uh enemies being able to bring reinforcements like this Get away from Yannick. You remember in like the last part where Yannick was getting KO'd like a lot? I'm trying to avoid that this time, at least. Normally I would drink whatever that water has, but then again, this is the corruption and we were told not to drink too much of anything, so let's just avoid that. Because I feel like that will have a consequence later on if you drink something from the corruption. Okay, so this was clearly just a case where you could either come through this section, beat up those enemies, and then come here, or do that, but if you want to make things easier for yourself, but then again, I do like uh, clearing out a whole map area just for consistency. Once again, you return to the central hall. From Hylas and Miranda are there. They are having an animated argument. You can't hear a word of what they are saying. The demon is keeping the wind level in, this room, in the room high to deter eavesdroppers. Miranda and the Infernal notice your presence simultaneously. The demon turns and the wind dies down. You are here. You lived. Come, I will decide. Once again, the winds grab you. You are ready for it, but instead of fighting them, you let them smoothly carry you before the demon's throne. The Wind Lord looks down at you and Miranda. He opens his mouth and, once again, the breeze is, it, is his voice. Difficult. So difficult. Did not want you. So many intruders. Wanted peace. Now, deciding time. What to choose. And what are you choosing? Let you live? Let Miranda live? Kill you all? I like last choice. Simple. Clean. Hunger satisfying. But Miranda talked. Now you talk. You. From Abaddon. Let you live. Why? What did Miranda say? She talked. Asked me not to tell. I will not tell. For now. Answer. I am impatient and hungry. I won't beg, creature. Decide and be done with it. From Hylas nods. Brave. Foolish. Now I decide. So difficult. So what will you choose? The Wind Lord turns back to Miranda. You offered... Reward, magic, power, to help your lord. The let's, rebel, human politics, boring, not interested, not interested in any of you. Wait, the less? From Hylas turns back to you. Yes, the less, enemy. Yes, sends envoys, wants help, sends from his hiding place in. Miranda shouts, 
No! She leaps forward and the demons wind bonds her. Demons wind bonds fall from her instantly. You said. From Hylus waves a hand and a gust blows her back. The less hiding in Tawan, Tawan, in dirty basements, temple basements, cowardly, uninteresting. Miranda is shocked and furious. Whatever the demon meant, she feels he has dropped a very important piece of information. Temple basements? What do you mean? The demon looks at Miranda and smiles. Her distress amuses him greatly. She snarls. You swore, demon. Kremhylus replies, I honor oath, no oath, not to weak mortals. Decision difficult, rewards unclear. We'll let matter settle itself. Settle itself how? Miranda snaps. It doesn't matter, Hand. Now that you know what you know, you must die. I must make sure of it. Grimhylus the Wind Lord nods. Yes, one will kill, other will kill. Lovely symmetry. Let one kill, other makes decision easy. Now you fly, now you fight. Prove your worth. And then a lot happens. The bonds holding you fade away. Miranda takes a step forward and begins to cast a spell. And the Demon Lord raises both of, it, both of its massive, clawed hands. The demon waves his claws towards you, and a massive gale of wind grabs you and Miranda and flings you to the east. From Hylos Wars, if one of you lives, I will deal with that one. The wind carries you toward a massive closed portcullis. Fortunately, it opens to let you through and then closes behind you, thus helping you avoid an inevitable death. The wind deposits you in a strange bedroom, a huge hall full of opulent rugs and lovely beds with silken sheets. It seems like an illusion or a warped creation of the corruption. Several of this land's horrors are waiting for you on the broad carpet. Miranda, however, is definitely real. She lands near you. Hunger and abuse have left her days, but she still manages to begin to cast a spell. Wind hasn't died down, in fact it only gains intensity. It blows you down the hall once again, depositing you in an abandoned guard post. Oh, I actually should have sped up. Or use taste, I mean. Miranda may look worn, but she is surrounded by powerful magical wards. You connect with a solid blow, but it barely scratches her. Actually, destroying her is more than you can manage in these windy circumstances. Your attack does, however, knock her off balance. She was already dazed. She stumbles back into a gust of wind, temporarily unable to attack. Once again, the wind blows you down the hall to a new chamber.
The northern gate leading out of this chamber is closed and flanked by a pair of massive statues of infernals. You try to get a look at the glorious hall beyond, but you don't have time. When the wind picks you and Miranda up again, it spins you around the room. Then it splits you up. The gate to the north opens slightly and Miranda is carried away through it, receiving a nasty knock on the head as she goes. You are accompanied by to the south, accompanied by you are carried to the south, accompanied by an ever larger cloud of dust and debris. You are carried to another guard post. A gate slams behind you, trapping you in and the wind dies down. You unsteadily rise to your feet. Oh, dang it. Oh, dang it. Why did I do that? Ah. during breastplate. Nah, I don't really care for endur raising endurance too much. So, we are just gonna sell that. I don't really see the point in like specializing in endurance anyway, to be perfectly honest. Unless you really want to have a character tank a bunch of damage, but even then that's still a waste. The only real purpose of endurance is just to uh, help you take some damage and hit stuff like that. Like, it just leveled up right now, in fact. I 
At level 3, adds 5% per level effectiveness to battle blessings and curses. At level 3, also causes the Blade Master to partially reflect attack spells. That sounds good to me, so we'll take advantage of that. As you emerge through a crack in the wall into one of the basis halls, the wind picks you up again. It rushes in from behind you. You try to grab onto something to steady yourself. The effort is futile. A mighty gust blows down the hall from behind you. As it carries you along, you see that someone has been flung into the hall. She is Miranda, who looks even more bruised and motion sick than before. As she flies down the hall alongside you, she shouts, You! You ruined everything! You will pay! Before you can respond, you are dumped next to her in another hall. There are several horrors already here, but Miranda ignores them. She shouts, I could spend my whole life killing hands, and it would never be enough. Okay, well, we do have to summon our stuff again, but all good. I could have gone for them, actually. Miranda may look warm, but she is surrounded by powerful magical wars. You can oh okay, whatever. That's this dialogue we heard already. Ah, dang it. Why do I always forget that for some reason? I mean, I get so excited to attack with the wand, his, uh, a, the sorcerer, sorcerer's, uh, basic attacks so much that I forget that it's fire based. And like I said earlier, if you watch my playthrough of, uh, the first Abaddon, you see I made that mistake so many times, it's not even funny. Okay, well, if he can stop tossing me around so I can save the game and get this over with, then that would be really great. This is honestly starting to get a bit tedious here, not gonna lie. I mean, don't it is a creative boss fight, it's just I need to save the game at some point. This time, when the wind, wind rips you out, out of this hall, it rips Miranda away from you. She flies down to the south toward the main gate of the base. As she floats away, she screams curses at you. You are blown to the west. The guts deposit you, soaring and gasping, on the floor of the majestic hall where you met 
Krim Hylas. The Demon Lord is waiting for you in the middle of the hall alone. Well, I still have to kill these enemies, apparently. Seeking Lance. Ooh, that would be good if I use spears, but I don't. At level three, adds five percent for level resistance to magical magic and elemental attacks. At level three, turret occasionally also hates nearby allies. Ooh, that'll be good. At level three, adds three percent per level chance of damaging and stunning anyone who strikes you. In melee, at level 3, as a chance that the snow will also slow the enemies. Okay, that's going to be very handy. You walk up to Krimhylus, Lord of Winds, understandably furious about the abuse you have just up suffered. You're disappointed to find that the demon doesn't seem to be here. Its form is translucent and you don't feel the powerful magic that surrounds him. The shade looks at you, and once again, the wind rises up and forms the sound of words. You are here. I am done. Where is Miranda? Gone. Out of my home. Forbidden to return. She will do her work without me. What did Miranda want? My aid with her rebellion. Her plan. I am not involved. What was her plan? Bold, suicidal, ambitious, destructive will not say want to see it happen will amuse me what do you know about the less little more than what i said use what i revealed more fighting more war amuses me and now you are telling me to leave this fortress is lost to you it is mine i claim it go now i free you it is a gift not deserved you can live why are you letting me go do not want to annoy Avanon. It will send more pests. One little favor, no more. I'll just be going then. Go. Do not return. We are done. Life is my gift. Now I will watch the carnage, the war, and I will laugh. Return and I will kill you. And then the final gust of wind blows the demon shade away. It crumbles into little motes of smoke and a mo moment later is gone. The gate to the south opens up. Miranda has escaped, but you have learned much valuable information. It is time to report back to Avedon. Hmm. How do we get out of here, though? We probably could fight him later, honestly, now that I think about it, but not right now. I mainly just want to focus on getting out of here. That fire powder. Ooh, we can take that back to uh, uh, Nicodemus. All right, take that. This wheel has all kinds of fans and gunk in the mechanism, but you manage to loosen and turn it. 
The gate to the east rises about halfway, then the machinery becomes permanently stuck. Alright, so if we want to come back and fight him, I guess we can. You leave the crumbling fortress and return to the dust and harsh sunlight of the corruption. There is no sign of Miranda. He took advantage of her head to head start to flee. You don't have the energy or the provisions to engage, engage in the long hunt of the waste for her. Your only option is to return to Monitor Bay C and tell them of, dis of disaster here. Okay. Okay, we do have time to hurry up and talk to them before we return to Avedon. Corruption Zephyrs. Okay, we already completed that. Oh yeah, we do have that quest to clear out when we get back to... Uh, and we also have to talk to uh, Ann Esme about the Wandering Guy. We also should go ahead and talk to that counselor and let him know about our opinion about uh, building more monitor bases. I found Miranda and Monitor Base D. You tell Commander Ophira what happened. She is much more interested in the fate of Monitor Base D than in Miranda. Lost? Already lost? That base was supposed to last. The corruption mocks us, as always. Thank you for this information. A giant demon holds the base? It probably can't be reclaimed then. I'll send the unhappy news back to Hanvar's council. There is something I would like to know about. Okay, uh, so she has no new info there, but let's go ahead and talk to him. Anyway, while we are here, give him our opinion. I have my opinion about the monitor bases ready for you. I am glad to hear it. I know you have traveled extensively, fought the horrors, breathed the dust. The Ward of Avedon would do much to help me make a decision. So, Malik, should the pack keep building monitor bases in the corruption? Can't the bases be built outside? We have tried that. The corruption has ways of concealing itself. Only the base inside can see through the dust. Measure will not work here. You should not build the bases. Interesting. Why? The cost is not worth it, and it never will be. Really? That is a somber judgment. All that waste. Still very interesting. That is all you want to know? It is. Thank you, Malik. Honest, fresh information about the corruption is almost impossible to get. You have provided for me more than you know, and at great risk. I have had my doubts about Avedon in the past, but you have shown that the Black Fortress can provide resources nobody else can. You have done well for your masters today. Now, please excuse me, I have much to think upon. And I agree, I mean... Yeah, I mean, if that fort was meant to last for a long time, and it's already gone then it's just not worth it for anybody any human to stay here pretty much all right with that in mind now that our work here is done for now we're no doubt we're gonna come back but let's just return to Abaddon all right, with that in mind, let I will go ahead and save the game right here, and I'll see you all soon with the next part of Let's Play.